Good afternoon, my friends. Now we are going for Dr. J.C. Banerjee oration as a medallion. Where is the medallion for the J.C. Banerjee oration? This one? No, no. Dr. Professor Panjai, please come over here. Uh, before it a colo, it a colo. Now it is our pleasant duty first to present the medallion to Professor Paja. Arup Kundu, you please give the medallion to Professor Paja. Yes. Now I uh, request. Professor Pajar to start his <coughs> oration on the current status of renovascular hypertension. Oh, oh, you know, me. Professor. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, we, uh, do you like to say something uh, regarding yeah. the J.C. Banerjee? Okay. okay. Please continue, sir. Professor, late J.C. Banerjee, he was the eminent teachers, great clinicians, and researchers. He was a professor head and director of internal medicines at Calcutta Medical College. He was the president of Cardiological Society of India and he was the founder member of API along with Dr. Muni Dey. And he established an oration, Umarani Benarji orations on the manner of the CSI 20 years before I gave the Umarani Benarji oration and Delhi Annual Conference of Cutlery Society of India. Today, I am fortunate and I have been invited and thankful to the organization committee to invite me to give the oration of Jesse Menarji for his memory. My subject of talk, current status of renovascular hypertension and prevention of cardiovascular mortality on our experience. You know, chronic kidney disease, because of the two diseases, one because of renal parenchymal disease, that should take care of the nephrologist, and second is CKD due to the renovascular hypertension, is responsible for the cardiologist, particularly intervention cardiologist. Bruno Al defined the, what is definition of renovascular hypertension. A renovascular hypertension is co non drum. In Bengali, is the dhanda. And it involves a wide spectrum of disorder, incidentally insignificant hemodynamical hereditary stenosis, which progress to the reduce the perfusion of the kidney and stimulate the rash activations, leading to the acceleration of the cerebrovascular diseases, initially diastolic dysfunction and heart failure and stroke. And ultimately, it progress to ischemic nephropathy the persistent renal tissue hypoxia and extensive renal microvascular disease and renal atrophy. You know the essential hypertension incidence is 95 percent, secondary hypertension 5 to 7, among which renovascular hypertension is gut number. What is a clinical clue for the renovascular hypertension? Onset of hypertension before the age of 30 or after age of 50. So after age of 50 due to atherosclerosis and this and the below 30, it is definitely either the renovascular hypertension due to fibroscular dysplasia or some aorta arthritis. Second thing, acceleration of treated essential or primary hypertension or deterioration of renal function in treated that is a primary essential hypertension because of atherosclerosis. Second thing, acute kidney injury during the treatment of hypertension. So this is also a renovascular hypertension. And flash pulmonary edema, again it is a part of the renovascular hypertension. Progressive renal failure, refractory heart failure, it is the presentation of renovascular hypertension. Unilateral small atrophic kidney, accidentally uh, diagnosed by the ultrasound, that is also the part of the clue for the renovascular hypertension. We suspect the renal hypertension, absence of the family history of hypertension. Hypertension particularly more than 110 by 180 by 110 at the below the age of 20 years or above the age of 50 years. And it's difficult 
to manage and resist the hypertension significantly having the in organ damage and sometimes the hematuria proteinuria indicating the renal disease ckd absence of the pulses unequal falls radio femoral delay and dominant bruit of the neck and abdomen this is a clue for the renal vascular hypertension significant elevation of creatinine level after treatment of s inhibitor we have important clue for diagnosis of renal vascular hypertension again hypertension in children is also part of the renal vascular hypertension so that what little gentleman diagnosis is very important complete history and physical examination confirm the diagnosis and patient present to the extensive headache particular occipital headache and worsening headache in the morning is the part of the renal vascular hypertension the bedside examination is very important fundoscopic that is tortuosity renal artery that is the silver wire afferent grade 1 that is the retinopathy grade 2 when there is atrophic arterial branch nephing arterial branch nothing but the small cali retinal artery crossing the vein is called the arterial branch nephing third thing the flame hemorrhage or soft cotunnel exudate which is nothing but the infarction of this nerve optic nerve fourth is the papillary edema that is blurring of margin optic disc and when three and four come in together is called the malignant hypertension so when we examine the patient renal vascular hypertension we keep in mind we have to detect the complication of renal vascular hypertension which leading to the but atherosclerosis that is the uh, enhance the process of atherosclerosis aneurysm of the aorta abdominal aorta thoracic aorta and aortic dissection and renal involvement with the hematuria proteinuria and ultimately chronic kidney disease and heart failure because of the pulmonary edema macular infarction lebron clot hypertrophy and again when the brain involvement tia and stroke that is because of the hemorrhage and infarction and convulsion and cognitive dysfunction particularly the vascular dementia and blindness because of uh, the 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 retinopathy hemorrhage exudate atrophic nephing and papillary edema there is a patient is taken for research book and here the white arrow indicating the that is a, a white arrow indicating the exudate and flames red black arrow indicating the hemorrhage and blurring of the optic disc this very diagnostic bed site now question before proceeding the renal vascular hypertension you have to know the cause the commonest cause of the western countries the atherosclerosis western cancer elderly is the 60% population renal vascular hypertension atherosclerosis fiber muscular dysplasia there are 35% cases second is takashotori is i go discuss later on and it is the and takashotori is chronic inflammatory disease pesel predilection young female without a non cause and the fiber muscular dysplasia usually the the stenosis uh, at the distal two third of the renal artery and its branches particularly omen medially involved the middle artery it may involve the intima adventitia as well at the age range of 20 to 60 year it may involve the carotid leading to the cerebrovascular accident it may involve the coronary acute coronary syndrome other causes the aortic dissection renal dissection and due to the thromboembolic manifestation and cholesterol embolism in the renal artery and the post transplant renal artery stenosis and post radiation renal artery stenosis and apart from that some extrinsic compression by the tumor may be the renal vascular hypertension and then in our country the renal vascular hypertension the takashi artery is very progressive disease which is commonest i talk later on now clinically you have to examine the patient for the bruy that is carotid bruy and paraamblical bruy if the diastolic bruy more important for this for diagnosis of the, uh, the renal vascular hypertension you have to detect the at bed site macroalbuminemia microalbuminemia for the early renal injury of course the proteinuria at late stage when the huge protein increase in 3 g per 24 hour is very bad prognosis of the renal vascular hypertension when there is some no clue but moderate degree of suspension that case is non invasive test is recommended the color doppler ultrasound and ct renal angiography mri angiography and the, the technetium as a dtpa and 
iodine heparin scan these tests are the function to know the functional status of kidney disease the mri of course very higher sensitivity 90% cases and specifically 92 percent when the high degree suspicion we used to do the renal artery angiography which is a gold standard investigation other test for the renal muscular hypertension the captopril screening test so before the giving the yogi 50 mg captopril to be given prior to giving we have give the blood for the renin activity and after 60 minute of the captopril you take another blood so there were pos positive test is that stimulate a plasma renin activity is about 12 nanogram per millimeter it is very effective absolute increase plasma renin a 10 nanogram per millimeter is positive of course the digital substruction angiography another important diagnosis here is the patient on the right side this is the left side there is severe obstruction there and post tenuity dilatation with the renal artery because of renal atherosclerosis and here is very important i told you the fibro muscular dysplasia it involve distal two third of the renal artery and is branches you see the fibro muscular dysplasia and it may be associated with renal artery renal uh, carotid artery as well as the coronary artery by leading the acute coronary syndrome and this treatment the coronary and and the plasty plain will and sufficient some cases you have to give this stain here the atherosclerotic relative stenosis we are giving this stain and their excellent result for control the renovascular hypertension now coarctation is the mechanism of hypertension coarctation two thing on the obstructive theory when there is the upper limb hypertension but below the obstruction less flow going to the renal kidney less perfusion which is responsible for my hypertension and uh, that is the um, uh, renal vascular hypertension and here is the patient you see severe coarctation distal to coarctation less blood going and filling the kidney in, in, in that is insufficient flow it is also responsible hypertension second thing you can clinically so continuous bruit because of connection with the subclavian as well as the intercostal branches and rib notching is present and is very important diagnosis of the coarctation aorta now my subject to talk the renal intervention renal muscular hypertension case of aorta arthritis the largest data of the world and here is the on my patient as admitted so both the sister uh, at suffering from aorta arthritis and devastating disease both subclavian artery and left carotid artery block as well as the renal artery block and here you see just i presented tct two weeks before in the main podium of the the usa this year and here is the we presented 750 cases you see among which 306 cases we have do the angioplasty among which 20 lesion the renal artery stenosis and aorta we publish in the jack emerald college of cardiology and the different type and the renal vascular hypertension is type 3 on the arch as well as the renal artery involved 76% cases you see the one of the patient when was the postgraduate student and the doctor chetri that time the patient died due to aortic dissection you see 13 year girls bilateral renal stenosis small kidney below the renal artery there is a severe narrowing and this is the aneurysm and the all layer of the intima media involved and bacteria appearance of the aorta so the devastating disease very difficult to manage the patient therefore indication of the renal angioplasty when the blood pressure not controlled by the single drug stenosis more than 70 and the particularly length of the stenosis 15 mm there is no activity of disease pianka sianka normal normal esr but so many landmark trial throughout the whole world you see the starting from the 98 to the 2017 so many landmark trial progression confirmation of the medical treatment versus and the angioplasty and stenting and there is no difference they say any but trial there is no difference of blood pressure and six month follow up and cortis nucleosal trial and the the lower the blood pressure when there bilateral renal stenosis but actually there is no cardiovascular event and there there is no difference and that trial german the no difference in systolic diastolic pressure on 12 month follow up and no difference in the anti hypertension needs and worsening and the kidney failure and star trial no difference in the decrease creating clearness in 24 month and astra trial there is no difference of kidney outcome and blood pressure control and cardiovascular event and 2014 coral trial no difference of primary endpoint of the renal point including the kidney outcome and cardiovascular event and death 43 months follow up recently 2017 that is the american college of cardiology american heart association they recommend the renal stenosis medical therapy 
Only decays then if the, by medical therapy, if the renal resistance is worsening, hypertension, and uncontrolled hypertension clinically, then you have to call the reverse closure either by angioplasty or by surgery. Now, therefore, recent registry published, that is the registry data indicate benefit of renal artery stenting in case of the following situation. Three is the intractable hypertension and kidney injury by the S inhibitor treatment, I add with treatment, and third thing, recurrent episodic pulmonary edema. This is very important indication. Our experience, the thoracic aorta, as well as the abdominal aorta, we have done it 52 cases, and by the plane balloon, and we have given the stain only thoracic aorta 3 and the abdominal aorta 9. And here is the patient, you see, upper limb, I done the case at the SSK hospital 15 years before, severe upper limb hypertension, renal impairment, creatine also low because of less flow to the kidney. And we managed by the plain balloon and the Here is the balloon, plain balloon, no stain. You see, there's a minor dissection, is there, is heal automatically, there's no gradient after balloon and geoplasty. Now, this is a very important case, and the Five years before done the case in Bellevue Nursing Home, this is the patient, you see, severe obstruction, upper limb obstruction, 220 pressure, upper limb, lower limb, and the radial angio shows, and good flow to the, you see, are you putting the stain, the cell vaccine stain into thoracic aorta, and particularly cell stain expanding, and is not proper expand, then we give the some balloon at the middle of the, the site of the stenosis balloon, ultimately, result is acceptable. In this case, done in 2015, the upper limb hypertension control, now patient uh, developed uh, the, the pregnancy and very successful pregnancy. Therefore, by angioplasty thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta, mean diameter increase, pressure gradient dec significantly decrease. So, in the 120 case lesion, we have done the, uh, that is the angioplasty renal artery, 80% success, a is developed with the five years and the 18 person cases. And here is the patient, it's a bilateral renal I done the SSKM 20 years before. Bilateral renal stenosis, just a renal aorta. We given this one stain right, left, another stain in the abdominal aorta. You see, restoring normal circulation. This patient still alive and give birth to two child. Patient doing well in, along with some medicine. So these very interesting cases. I also presented this tissue to show 18 years male, a extensive headache, and this developed the second hypertension, abdominal bruit, you see, very important, angiography shows, and the right kidney not available. Left kidney, 99% block of the left kidney here. We have done the, and the, the cross, the wire is cross, then after the direct stenting, I not taken this to dilate, dilate the uh, renal artery, because chance of dissection, I put the direct stent here, and ultimately, the very important result, some acceptable result, some dissection of aorta, because there are one kidney I not dilate furthermore. After that, I give in one post dilatation by the uh, high pressure balloon. The post dilatation high pressure balloon. Because intima, media, administs are all affected, so that is very difficult to dilate fully. If I dilate more, chance of dissection there. Because of one kidney, I was restrained myself not to dilate more, and patient doing hypertension control after one year. The, the, the total occluded kidney, uh, I have an atrophic kidney is removed by operation. Now this is the, this is the final result, you see, now accepted result. Now this is the patient, and they came from the, uh, coronary renal fellow came from the, uh, the, the Nepal, you see, dialysis going on, and we had done the renal angioplasty, the coronary balloon, wire cross, inflated the coronary balloon, and appreciable result. And then ultimately, the, put a stain on the right side and now uh, final result. Therefore, creatine level within six months reduced to 1.4, patient doing well. So this last case, the patient is about 38 years, lady, she's a doctor, came from Raipur with a refractory hypertension, diagnosed as type two, type three, uh, the autotritis. And five years before, Pianka, Sianka, and yes, are very high, and clinical bruit of the carotid, abdominal aorta, Patient was put on steroid and methotrexate for a long time, and blood when came to the Bellevue Clinic, 120 milligram creatinine, and that is the urea creatine is the 6.8 hemoglobin 6.8. We giving the transfusion of fluid, and particularly 72 hours, and three bottle of blood, and correct it. Then you do the angioplasty. It's a very important case. See, no right kidney. You see, only left kidney is there. Only left kidney is, is there. This is the only kidney, 95% block left. Right is nothing there. 
this very good result this is the first guide on place and cross the wire cross the wire and balloon balloon inflated sequential balloon and different size inflated you see then we put the stand here the onyx stand drag eluting stand 4 into 20 mm stand is placed here the appreciable result here now the full dilatation the renal artery and ultimately this is the final result on the left side then the right kidney total occluded we cross the the coronary wire cross the lesion you see then the balloon inflated at the ostium you see on the same sitting i have done this thing and this in balloon inflated sequential different size balloon inflated here and then ultimately the good result after dilatation and the final result this is the final result whole kidney visualized in case of total in the case of ckd with the dialysis and total occlusion of the artery appreciable result patient doing well now ladies and gentlemen actually on the six weeks she is a doctor six weeks came to me from raipur blood pressure reduced to 120 without any without minor drugs and some hemoglobin 10.5 greater than 1.4 she resumed normal duty three days before he came to me she is doing well and this kind of that for this kind of patient there is enough scope of intervention in cases of chronic kidney disease with total occlusion of the artery the medical decision making extremely important for long term benefit therefore prevention of steroid for prevention of dysnosis prevention of the reocclusion so the prevention of reactivity of disease we put on steroid for long time steroid and methotrexate together for long time even now his load is getting so ladies and gentlemen particularly during follow up of my cases of 120 uh, cases and this 18 percent is dysnosis again the plain balloon sufficient to dilate the dysnosis area which improve the symptomatic improvement and control the blood pressure only by plain balloon or risk management of the dysnosis stain now finally the renal drainage coming up from last year to city in the america call america yes uh, the last year and this four message the same treatment with a new technology second thing the side branch as well as main branch treatment also improvement thirdly the absence of medication very important and that was signify rebirth of the renal degeneration rebirth means initially simple cystic trial there but is not successful ultimately the new trial with the with help of the radio frequency ablation and endovascular ablation here is a simple cystic trial you see molecular trial and the particularly here reduce blood pressure compared to same control where the main branch main artery as well as the, and the branch uh, branch of the renal artery also the branch of the renal artery main branch total radio frequency ablation done both systolic diastolic pressure reduced within 6 month second trial is very important trial is the radiant hypertension solo and the uh, paradise renal trial here you see the ultrasonic heating then water cooling ultimately thermal power so therefore significant reduction of the the systolic as well as diastolic pressure so therefore compared to three trial one is the uh, simple cyst trial by the radio frequency both systolic diastolic fall the systolic pressure in the particularly uh, minus 13 which is largest by the ultrasonic main artery and the diastolic pressure also the superior in case of systolic diastolic pressure therefore ladies and gentlemen renal denervation effective lower the blood pressure a resistant hypertension all three technique and technology exhibited favorable safety and this year and endovascular ultrasound and based on renal denervation superior to radio frequency may not be this year or tcti also there two weeks and enough discussion done on that subject so ladies and gentlemen on follow up study we have done the follow up study for nine the from 1976 actually this study of autarty started with dr chetri and dr myself and dr jontu was one the subject and that for 152 cases we had done the angioplasty thorough follow up five years mortality 9% and the 10 year mortality 26% compared to the without angioplasty 26 25 and 48% and failed angioplasty if you not the surgery that cases mortality is very high therefore stigma and adverse consequences 
the phalangeoplasty very bad prognosis hypertension heart failure bad prognosis children with dilated cardiomyopathy bad prognosis when the bilateral renaissance is accelerated meningeal hypertension very bad prognosis so therefore ladies and gentlemen in my conclusion natural history of renovascular hypertension particular takaso arthritis has the carries substantial mortality morbidity medical therapy not efficacious at all childhood onset carries bad prognosis early and the plasty of the stenosis vessels produce symptomatic improvement prevent the fatal complication like cerebrovascular accident heart failure as well as the kidney failure and all group of the and the aorta arthritis of course fail and just as a bad prognosis if not surgery done thank you very much for patient hearing thank you dr paja for the nice deliberation as uh, it is an oration no question is allowed i declare the session closed no, oh, okay. Oh, okay okay, okay. thank you sir persons it is a pleasant duty to present on behalf of the scientific committee memento to professor paj and dr and dr udas ghosh is requested to hand over the mementos to the chairpersons please